Okay, welcome to this PHP Basics tutorial. Um, in this video, we're going to talk fairly briefly about uh, includes and requires, which are fairly similar. Um, basically, there are four sort of functions that we're going to talk about. The reason I say sort of functions is that um, these are not technically functions, although they can look like them. Um, they are language constructs, um, just part of the language of PHP. For example, like an if statement. Uh, is also a language construct. Um, basically, what an include, well, what an include can do um, is sort of take the output of a script and well, take take the code. Well, I'll just do it with an example. Um, you see here we have these two um, files, view and include. Basically, we're going to be working with view, which will include the include file, and I'll just sort of demonstrate what that means with a few examples. So uh, I've got these two files open here. Um, the view file is just a basic HTML page with no PHP code in it, and the include file is just a sort of blank PHP script. So if we just go to our browser and open the view file, we see we just get a blank page. Um, say if we were to, in the include file, um, do uh, let's see, uh, let's just output the numbers 0 to 10 with a for loop. Um, so let's say for i equals 0 while i is less than or equal to 10 increment i echo I'm just going to do i um, sorry about this, i and a space so if I go back to our browser um, and go to this page so we get the numbers 0 to 10. Um, if we view the output of this script directly all we're getting from this script is the numbers 0 to 10 which is why we're getting these HTML errors uh, in my validator plugin thing. Um, what we want to do uh, in this for this example is include this data in this HTML template so we want the numbers 0 to 10 to go here. So what we're going to do is use the include function include I say function. Uh, in the PHP block, we're going to include this the file name, which was include, like so. If we now go back to our page and hit reload, we get the numbers 0 to 10, uh, with one error because I haven't put a paragraph or div or something tag around it. But you see what has happened is that basically the output has worked. We have the numbers 0 to 10 inside the body tags. So that's one way you can use include. Um, the difference between include and require is that um, for require, PHP will kill the rest of the script if the file is not found. For example, if I just spell this wrong and hit reload, we get this error. But if I view the page source, um, you see that we get the error HTML, but we also get the closing body and HTML tags. Uh, whereas if I replace this with require, require like so, and go back to our page and hit reload. Uh, so you get a similar error except there's fatal error. And if I go to our um, HTML and just reload this, you see we don't get the HTML or body tags. Because what PHP has done here is basically exited. It's sort of called the die function almost. Um, so yeah, if you require a file and that file is not found, your script will terminate at that point. Um, to be honest, you very rarely try to include a file that doesn't exist. So I don't often use require, so yeah. Uh, let's just spell this right again. UD. Just make sure it's worked. And it has. Good. Okay, so um, include once is another function, um, like so. Um, if you only call it once, basically it does the same thing. Um, but say you basically you did this twice, you only get it once. Um, Basically, what the include once function does is fairly self-explanatory in the name. It will only include the file you give it once in the script. So, say if I just change these back to includes and hit reload, so you get the numbers 0 to 10 twice. Um, when it was include once, we just got them once, like the name suggests. Um, the reason for this is, like I say, the include once function will only include the file you give it once in the current script. Um, can be useful in some cases. Uh, I don't use it very often myself. Um, I tend to just sort of control when I'm including the files or not. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, a good example of this. 
say you had an init file which made the database connection and a few other things if you include once that then um, basically it means that if you some but for, uh, for whatever reason you include it again it you won't reconnect to the database it'll just be ignored um, but yeah like I say I prefer just to make sure they don't ever include it twice um, there are probably more examples when it makes a bit more sense um, so yeah that's pretty much it um, yeah so uh, the other thing I haven't mentioned yet is require once which is basically the same as um, include once except it's for require remember I talked about how require uh, will kill the script if the file is not found um, require once acts in the same way as that except it only requires the file once if you call it more than once um, sort of not, uh, not really an alternative use but another use for these uh, type of things if I just delete this from here and we go to the top of our page and do a new PHP block um, oh I can just mention here as well that you, there is sort of this isn't necessarily the alternative syntax but it is an alternative to the way I did it you can call the include function without any brackets around it so dot PHP this will work just the same as it did previously if I reload the page you see we still get 0 to 10 uh, although this time they're at the top before the doc type which is terrible but yeah um, so yeah you can do that um, you c oh another thing you can do uh, is what I was actually going to talk about now um, return values say you have your script um, instead of like counting to 10 and outputting the stuff directly output the data directly, the numbers, uh, you can have it sort of return this value sort of like a function in, in a sense. So say you just had this uh, script return test like so and then from here if we reload the page you see we get no output. But say if you assign the result of this to a variable like example equals like so and then down here you do echo example Oops, example, hit reload, you see we get test. So basically, um, return from an include um, is similar to it is in a function, actually. In fact, it's exactly the same, yeah. Okay, so that's good. <laughs> Needs to explain. Um, think of return in an include file as you would a function. Um, to be honest, this doesn't get you, I don't use this myself very often because I'm not sure it's just not very practical. It makes a bit more sense to have include files define things that you then use later, like define a big load of functions rather than just do one task. But yeah, uh, you could sort of use this in an if statement, say, like say you had, oh, I can't think of an example, say you had a script that validated the logged in user, you could sort of do something like, um, you could use it in an if statement, like if, actually I think you need two of these, like if uh, that equals test like do something with the logged in user let's just say echo if why not so if I reload this page now uh, you see we get undefined variable example because I deleted the variable uh, so you see we get this output if but then if I go back to our um, include file that we're including and have it output something else like um, not test and then reload our page you see we don't get any output um, because you can basically use an include file in an if statement like so uh, you can use it pretty much in any language construct any um, yeah any situation really as long as, as long as you put brackets around it so yep yeah, that's that um, one thing I should mention that you can't really um, you can't use it for example as a function Oops. Uh, if we do this you'll see that when I reload the page we get um, sort of an awkward syntax error because it's trying to include a file um, basically you just can't do that <laughs> there's a better explanation for it um, on php.net um, because yep right um, this here is being interpreted uh, interpreted um, as include the condition so it's basically being interpreted as include 
this like so in brackets sort of like that which is essentially an empty string so yeah that's why it tells you the file can't be found because it's an empty string so yeah if you want to use it in an if statement uh, just don't use brackets don't call it as a function and place brackets around it let me see if we don't get any errors like we did didn't a moment ago um, so that's pretty much everything for includes uh, I should probably just mention that when you're calling it normally like say you had include include like so um, basically what that does here effectively to literally do this is take all of this code minus the PHP tag so all of this code and place it on this include line that's the effect that you get from including the file there uh, if you watch my um, templating basic template system video uh, I use this method to output the pages basically so yep that's one use for it um, the most common use I guess would just be including a big load of library files um, that you don't want to um, like copy and paste into yeah that's another thing uh, say you had like a load of functions defined in this page uh, you wouldn't want to have to define like copy and paste well let's just do it say you had a function like oops function test function just did that you wouldn't want to have to define like say you had a lot of pages you wouldn't want to have to paste that at the top of every page you could just include the file in all the pages and if you want to make any changes you don't have to edit this one file I've mentioned this concept before um, in the blog tutorial I talk about sort of good logic and output separation so yeah that is pretty much everything um, oh yeah um, I said I previously mentioned that there were five sort of include type functions um, which isn't strictly correct there is one function uh, let's just remove this it's the virtual function which um, sort of includes a file but it does something slightly more complicated um, it's well let's just demonstrate virtual oops include.php if I reload our page now oh, did this function have any output? Yeah. let's just have that echo that instead of returning it see we get the same output um, if you were to spell the function the file name wrong you would get the fact that it's not able to include and request execution has failed um, basically what <laughs> this isn't really the same as include because it will um, well you can look at it yourself it's on the php.net page for the virtual function it performs an apache, apache, apache sub request um, it's fairly complicated but it's um, sort of something left over from sort of how these things used to be done before PHP came along and made everything easy close this window um, so yeah basically don't use this <laughs> use include if, yeah if you want to actually do a sub request for some reason you can use it you should use the virtual function then but just using it as a replacement for the include method uh, is not a good idea so um, yeah that is pretty much everything I'm gonna say on includes so uh, thanks for watching and I hopefully you're not as surprised as I am that I managed to talk for this long so yeah thanks for watching